order for Holy Communion begins on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Proper is appointed for the Feast of the Transfiguration, begin on page 247. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses thine only begotten Son, wonderfully transfigured, in raiment white and glistering, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may be permitted to behold the King in his beauty, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee the Spirit to thank and to do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live accordingly to thy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the second epistle general of Peter, beginning at the 13th verse. I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Here endeth the epistle.
Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with the 28th verse. And it came to pass about of eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten as His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by Please be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning. Good to see all of you here. Welcome to Church of the Holy Communion Cathedral on this Transfiguration Sunday. We're glad to have you here. If you're visiting with us, special welcome to you. We do hope you'll either sign our guest register, which is located in the narthex, or there's a, a visitor card in the pew back in front of you. You can fill that out and place that in the offering plate as it comes around a little later. We'd like to just get to know you a little better. Also, as you go through the double doors on the right, there is a low table that has some visitor packets. It'll tell you a little bit more about us, so we invite you to take one of those with you. We also invite you to come over after the service next door to our parish hall, Lund Hall, for refreshments, uh, coffee and donuts. We have really good donuts, so I hope you'll come over. 
Uh, we'll lure you over, what, whatever it takes. So, uh, just a couple of other announcements. Uh, a reminder tonight: uh, there is the uh, tabletop game night social that'll be over in the parish hall, and the details are in the bulletin. Also, this week, daily offices: morning prayer, eight thirty; evening prayer, four thirty. Wednesday, we do have our noon Eucharist uh, as usual. Also, you'll uh, no, notice that in the mail, you received one of these uh, capital campaign commitment cards as we seek to build an education and leadership building. And so you should have received one of these, and we hope that you'll be prayerfully considering what you might be able to give to that over the next three years. And uh, return it in. We'd like to dedicate these on uh, September 10th for homecoming, at our homecoming service. So do hope you'll get those in and be praying about that. Uh, One other note, uh, two of our hymns, the uh, numbers were inadvertently missing. The good news is they're on the hymn boards on either side. So just a heads up on that. When we get to the last hymn, uh, notice it's 572. Well, other announcements, of course. I'm sure I missed something. Make sure you check your bulletin. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week that we can pray for? All right, let's turn to page 597, 597. Big birthday week and anniversary week. Praying together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Let us continue our worship with our sermon hymn, hymn number 464, Fairest Lord Jesus.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Well, whenever we're reading the Gospels and we hear that Jesus is going up onto a mountain, we need to pay careful attention. Some of the most important events in the Gospels occurred on mountains. For instance, Jesus was on a mountain when he was being tempted by the devil. It was on a mountain that he gave his most famous sermon. He was crucified on a mountain and he ascended into heaven from a mountain. So when St. Luke tells us in our gospel lesson that Jesus took three of his disciples and went up into a mountain to pray, let us understand that something significant is about to happen. In fact, what was about to happen was a revelation, an unveiling of something that would not be known to us otherwise. Our collect for today uses the word reveal in relation to the transfiguration of Christ. It opens with these words, O God who on the mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses thine only begotten son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistering. We might gather from our text today that the transfiguration is a revelation about Jesus and it is a revelation about us. First, the transfiguration is a revelation about Jesus. The context is noteworthy. Just before this, Jesus had asked his disciples the important question regarding his identity. Who do men say that I am? And then he says, who do you say that I am? And St. Peter had made his famous confession, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Almost immediately after this grand statement, Jesus instructed them to tell this to no one. And then he added, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. This must have been extremely puzzling to the disciples. If Jesus was the Christ, how could he be rejected and put to death? But this was God's plan all along. In fact, Jesus said after his resurrection to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? This background can help us to understand what was happening at the transfiguration. There was a certain pattern to Jesus' saving, saving work. Suffering was to precede glory. Looking back upon this event and its placement in the Gospels, perhaps we could conclude that this revelation was intended to help the disciples to look through the cross to the glory of Christ's kingdom. In fact, there is this enigmatic statement in the verse immediately preceding our gospel lesson today, which says, where Jesus said, but I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. The kingdom was revealed that day to Peter, James, and John. As they reached that mountain and Jesus began to pray, the evangelist tells us the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. Notice that it was not just his clothing that was glowing, it was also his countenance. In that moment, the divine glory which he shared with the Father from all eternity began to shine forth through his skin. And the brightness was so powerful that it radiated through his very clothing. Up to this point, the disciples had witnessed Jesus doing things that pointed to his divinity, walking on water, healing the sick, even raising the dead to life. But now these 
miraculous acts were supplemented by his own glory shining through his skin. This revelation of Jesus' divine glory should have sustained the disciples through his impending passion, but somehow this connection escaped them until after his resurrection. The transfiguration was a revelation of the true identity of Jesus Christ. And we would gather that now, now the glory of Jesus shines through his skin perpetually. For when St. John was granted his vision on the Isle of Patmos, he described Jesus in this way. His countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Since St. John had been one of those chosen witnesses that day, surely the memory of the transfiguration must have flashed through his mind in that moment. But the transfiguration was also a revelation about us. That is what Peter, James, and John experienced that day and then recorded as chosen witnesses for us was intended to reveal something very important about our future. Our colleague asked God to, quote, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may be permitted to behold the king in his beauty. In other words, let us have the same vision that Peter, James, and John had. This prayer recognizes that this event would have had lasting implications for all who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Note first the request to be delivered from the disquietude of this world. All of us who have lived long enough have experienced this disquietude. We have suffered from illness or have watched others suffer. We have suffered from the loss of loved ones. The words of our Lord ring in our ears. In this world ye shall have tribulation. But his promise that follows sustains us with hope. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. At almost every funeral we hear these comforting words from St. Paul. For I reckon, reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Here is the same pattern that we noted from our Lord's own life. Suffering precedes glory. So we pray that we might be delivered from the disquietude of this world and that we may be permitted to behold the king in his beauty. Let us learn to look through our suffering and long for the glory that shall be revealed when Christ returns. Because when we see him, all our troubles shall be over and we will experience the glory that has been promised to us. One day we will behold our king and shall never leave. St. Paul promises us <clears throat> when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So on this great feast of the transfiguration, let us be comforted in the revelation of the divine glory of Christ. And let us long to experience that glory for ourselves when we shall be delivered from the disquietude of this world to live in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Amen. And now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Our service continues on page 74 of your prayer books. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy <clears throat> holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. And take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please Thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of Thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You're also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, thou hast caused it a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given it to them, given it to them, he gave it. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, "Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me." Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, of, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, 
and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Now for those joining us by live stream and unable to receive Holy Communion, a prayer of spiritual communion. <clears throat> in union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. continue on page 83 of your prayer books. Let us pray. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.